Hi everyone, I'm Melissa C. Williams and today on the BBPN show I would like to welcome my guest actors um, from the Kids in Bizville play. We have Maud, Nairobi, and Zakia. Um, recently they did a play called the Kids in Bizville and I'd like to ask them some questions about, um, you know, first of all, Maud, um, when did you know you had acting talents? Well, I guess I was in elementary school, about first grade, and there was this play, and I didn't really know anything about acting. So then I was like, I want to be in it, but it was for third and fourth graders. So the director gave me a chance, and then when I started doing it, then that's when I realized that I could really act and that I wanted to do more with this and grow up acting and become an actor. So what grade are you in now? I'm in sixth grade. Wow, so from first to six you've been acting? Yes. Uh, how many plays have you done so far? Um, about approximately? About four or five. Wow, really? Four or five? Yeah. And the first time Wait, you... Go ahead. Five or six. Sorry. Five or six? And the first time you went on stage, how did it feel to you? At first I was kind of scared because there were a lot of people there and I've never done it before, but then as I started developing and doing it, I kind of felt better about it. Okay. In Nairobi, you? When did you start? When did you know that you wanted to be an actor? Uh, well, first I'd like to say thanks for having me on the BBPN show. You're very welcome. And, and thank you for being here. Yes, it's my pleasure. Uh, I think... Um, just like more, you know, you kind of have the bug your whole life mm -hmm. where you just you, you you do a lot of acting, but people like to call it lying. Okay. <laughs> you know. What I'm okay. Saying? And you know, I, when I was growing, I was a big liar, and there we have acting. Well, so somebody said to you, you should be an actor on stage. Yeah. You should bring that to the stage, and well, that's where it came from. Well, or no, they they never said go to stage with it. Okay. But uh, but what made you go you to the stage? Oh, okay. Um, what made me go to stage was I, I started doing stand up comedy, and with stand up comedy, it kind of goes in hand with comedy actor. You know, it's kind of like a progression of a stand up comic. You okay. all kind of want to bloom into being an actor and get those big bucks. Okay, okay, okay. But it's the love. It's the love for just, you know, playing characters and, and I, you know, it's the spotlight. So yeah. how extensive, extensive is your resume? How long have you been acting? I mean, how many plays have you done, I should say? Plays, uh... I, I this this is actually my first play. I mean, I, I did a play in grammar school, uh, Little Red Hen. Do you remember that? Okay, so the play that I just <laughs> the play that you not. just did that you guys just did uh, uh -huh. a couple weeks ago ago called Kids in Bizville Play, which I wrote myself. Um, I was a playwright and the director Daryl Willis Senior. Um, this play took place at the Count Basie Theater. And so this was your first play, okay? Yes. Did a very good job. What character did you play? I played the evil king, Shirimi. Oh, okay. And we're gonna get a, we're gonna roll a clip on that and we'll have them do a little improv in just a moment. But I do wanna get and find out from Zakia. Now Zakia, something very important. This is your, this is also your first play, right? Yes. Okay. For those fans out there, there's other people, what made you jump on stage? Um, I I actually enjoyed the content of the play. Okay. Um, I didn't necessarily think I was going to join at that moment that mm -hmm. we did the reading, but I embodied the character because it was something that I actually... What character was that? Auntie Natural. Oh, okay. Can somebody give us a little information? Tell us about the play. Who is Auntie Natural? Who is Sharimi? Um, just tell us a little bit. Give us a synopsis. Well, I, I'm going to just add that, you know, in acting, they have a, a, a thing called um, the acting secret. And in this play, the acting secret was that the evil King Sharimi uh -huh. and Auntie Natural are actually sisters and brothers. Wow, okay. So the big reveal was, you know, as I'm talking, I said, go get my sister, I mean, 
Auntie Natural and bam, I, I did hear someone when I said that, I heard somebody say, whoa. <laughs> yes, that's the big reveal, <laughs> the secret. So <laughs> what is the play about? Just give me a little more do you want to tell us. What is Kids in Bizville about to you? What did it's you... basically about these kids who built a town that they're very own called Kids in Bizville. Okay. Um, they built it because they wanted to get away from the terrible town that they were in called Weirdly, who was run by King Sharimi. And uh, they just wanted a new life for themselves and their family, so they decided that they weren't going to sit around and wait anymore, and they were going to actually do something about it. Okay. How about we roll a clip of that play to see the characters? And there's also two characters that are not here, uh, two actors that are not here that were in the play. They're Asiana Whitaker and Dejeuner. And we're going to roll a clip of them right now. The town was taken by force by a greedy, tyrannical ruler named Sharimi. Then fell into the ruins while a new town built by kids with the help and guidance of Auntie Natural. The town's original founder replaced the old town and boosted its economy. One day, the grog made with a bad batch of contaminated water made all the adults in the town ill. Many died. The only thing that would save them was Auntie Natural's elixirs. Welcome! I am Shirini, and this is my castle. It's beautiful. <laughs> Who let you in? <laughs> Let's go and find Auntie Natural. I agree. But, but what if Shreem finds out? No, no. We must all agree that he won't. We will be careful not to alarm the soldiers. Well, if Shreem and his soldiers are sick, then they won't be able to catch us. Where is the benevolence? I have been quiet long enough. King Sharimi and his merry band of soldiers have ruined the town of no. Italy, banished no. me from the town, yes. and even enticed his own people to drink grog until they died by the No one died, it's a bug. We all were sick. Now I taught them how to utilize their skills, building businesses and marketplaces. So guys, how do you find out about plays? How do, can you give our audience some information how they can go out and, you know, if they want to be in a play, how do people find them? I think the key is networking. Networking. Absolutely. Going to a play, going to a show, coming out, even like a little social events, open mics. Um, the, the, yes. The, the hands-on when you meet people. That, that that that's the easiest way. There's other ways. That there's um online casting networks and and you you know Social you have to pay a small fee to get into them, but you, you can go do it that way also. But the best way, the free way. Right. Is, is to networking events. E events that yes. are right here locally in your town are important. I think. When people don't actually show up, you know, you kind of um, do yourself a disservice because you might have met the director, okay? Right. You might have met a producer, or that's how you and I met, right? Uh, we met at an open mic, okay? And ever since then, we've been friends on Facebook, we're on social media, and we, when I see you post flyers about events, and I might post flyers, so now we have information and I know more about stuff, right? And the more you get out, you know, I see you're always at events, right? I'm trying. But, you know, you, you want to tell people that in order, if they want to be a part of things like plays and whatever else is going on, you got to get out there and yeah. do what? Definitely. And let me just ask you, because you knew, you mentioned networking and it's so important. But a lot of times people are shy. And when you first walk up on somebody, it's like, what is a conversation breaker for you? Uh, icebreaker for me, um, you know, you kind of like congratulate the people. You did a great job on the play. Um, how long have you been doing this? When is your next one? Absolutely. Is it local? Where's it going to be at? And then the, the, that information leads into. Uh, yeah, are you on social really media? Want. Maybe we can be friends, and that way I can kind of 
you can I can see your information and see when you're posting or when certain things are going on, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, Maud, how do you find out about the plays? Um, I guess I just talk to people. My mom knows a lot of people. Okay. And people tell her things, and then she just. How takes about in me school? Does the school stuff? give you information? Um. Well, no, be truthful, school, yes like, or no. Does the school give you information um, about things that are going on, like plays and things that you're interested in? Because if not, you know, this is something that needs to be, you know, we kind of can to touch on that some other time, you know? What things our community and our schools need to come together on. Actually, my school does tell about stuff, and they tell about, like, local plays that are either going on in, like, the high school okay. or anything. Okay, like good. Okay, so that's how, and how did you hear about, excuse me, how did you hear about the kids in Visville? Why? From him. He, like, I guess he was talking to my mom or something. Okay, so word of mouth, which is great. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's move on to some more personal things about you, each actor. What other things do you like to do besides acting, Zakia? Um, I like to spend time with my family. And I like to um, do a lot of arts and crafts, do-it-yourself um, things. Okay. Um, and outside of the play, outside of what I know you from, you also have another organization that you run yourself. Can you tell us just a little bit, give us the name, and just give us a little bit about what you do? Yes. So um, myself, along with one other um, my sister, Taina, we run um, tell a them. group. Tell the audience uh, to come My on sisters <laughs> at the West Side every Wednesday. It's like 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and we will be starting again in the summer. So it's a girls empowerment group where we want um, girls of the community, all of Monmouth County, to come and actually meet other girls that are not in their school, that are not in their neighborhood, to see how we can build um, healthy relationships and to have those professional networking relationships going forward. And what ages are they? Um, the ages start from five all the way up to the age of 18. Five to 18? Yes. Okay, and how can, like, do you have an email address? How can people um, contact you? Yes, so for more information about the program, you can send an email to my sisters, and that's M Y S I S T A S dot uh, info at gmail.com. So it's my sisters dot info at gmail.com. Um, we are looking for volunteers, and we are always welcoming girls of um, every ethnicity. We'd love to have everybody come in and be a part of our group. Okay, and once again, that is what age is five to five to eighteen. Five years old to eighteen. So as soon as you're able to start talking um, and going to school, you can join the group, right? Yes. What other things do you do outside hobbies? What else do you do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we know better than that. Well, you know, first I would I would like to uh, also say. Thank you for having me on the BPN show. <laughs> and of course, you're always welcome. Yeah. Nairobi Nelson. So if you're not tuning into the BBPN show, then you might be able to find me. Uh, I am in, in a couple of different organizations. Um, I'm in the uh, Cassie Brothers, uh -huh. originated, a fraternity that originated in uh, Asbury Park in 1982. Um, I'm in another group, uh, the Children First Coalition. Nice. Uh, you know, we do a lot of, um, both groups, we serve the community. It's a lot of community service involved. Um, also, I'm in a Acting 360 Network. Nice. They, You're all over. Yeah, they, they That's have good. a lot. They have a lot uh, going on with them. Uh, New York Casting, they have a lot. Uh, I, you know, I plan on being some, in some other ones um, in the near future. Um, but what I like to do... Is my, my, my passion is stand-up comedy. I like to like write jokes and make jokes and even just go to shows and listen to jokes. All right, before. let me interject for a moment because there's times, and I know this is crazy, but there are times when I've had some jokes that I would like to send to somebody because I think that I'm funny sometimes. But it's just, you know, sometimes you think you're funny, you're cracking up. You ever have a joke and you think it's funny? If we sent you a joke, how would you feel about that? Uh, well, um, 
if it fits, if I can make it work, then, you know. Do you welcome it, I should say? Yes. You're not offended by the fact that I think that I'm funny. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, 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 like, you ever have a joke and you crack it up and you want to, do you ever have a joke and you're cracking up? I'm asking the producer, Max Williams over here. But I mean, I've seen him crack it up about stuff and you really want other people to hear this joke. Maybe Nairobi might be the right one. I don't know. But I'm just saying like. You know, I want to tell my joke to somebody and I want him to tell the joke to somebody because I'm cracking up. I think it's funny. Would you do that? Um, I'm going to say yes and uh, no. Yeah. Because a lot of times it, when, when, when you're professionally telling jokes, yeah. the jokes have to be developed. Like you can come with a raw idea yeah. and then build it and punchline it. And then if you can even make it a running joke where, you know, it, it keeps running throughout the whole set, then it'll be great. So joking is all, jokes are actually more about the delivery. Yes, the delivery And the timing. Key. So you can't just run out here on stage and start telling jokes and thinking that you're funny because other people might not think that you're funny. Well, yeah, you, if the audience can't relate to your joke, then it's not going to be funny no matter how funny it is. Some jokes are hilarious. But the, if, if it goes over the audience head. Have you ever had that happen? And how do you feel? Like, what do you do? Like, how do you recoup from a bad joke? Yes, I have had that happen. But it's it's all different situations. Like, um, the worst thing that can happen when you doing stand-up comedy is the audience doesn't laugh at all. They just, you say your it's joke. It's just crickets, right? Nothing. <laughs> so then you're like, so do you... So are you, on? yeah, so like, are you, how do you recruit? Like, are you testing the jokes when you go out there? Um, yes. Maybe these are the wrong people for this joke. Well, yes, um, I, I took this hint from Eddie Murphy, the godfather. Um, you, the best way to develop your act is to go out to the open mics and wherever you can wherever you oh, can say okay, a joke okay. and you test them out and you test them out and you only take the good ones from from the uh the pe people ones laugh. that people will respond okay. to okay and then you put all those ones that people respond to all together it takes about a year of doing that and then after that year you take everything that responds to everybody um is relating to and then you go to Caroline's or you know a, a better All right, so don't club. don't think that just because you think you're funny that you can just hop on any old body's uh, in anybody's club and, and crack everybody up because it's not gonna work like that each town is differently yes people react differently mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. location is key to you want to observe the room and know who's in the room yeah because if you offend people yeah it, it's not gonna go they well. might uh, throw some apples at you or some eggs at you right well, Names. I've never got hit with any objects. You ever see on the Apollo Theater when they when the guy comes out with the cane and pulls oh, yeah. you? Out? You ever see that part? Yeah, yeah. Um, the, huh? the, the, yeah. the Sandman. Yeah, say, when Sandman comes the Sandman out. Sandman comes out. Yep. No, um, maybe one day I will try the Apollo out, but um, yeah, I don't get hit with any fruit or anything. But I have been hit with a boo. I mean, one time <laughs> you I, were hit with a boo. Yeah. And how, oh my God, like. Because it's important, and I'm saying this for even actors and comedians or anybody who hits the stage, um, you know, your your esteem is very important, or your confidence. You know, sometimes any one little thing, one negative thing, and you're thrown off. You're angry. What were you feeling when that person booed you? Well, the the first time I got booed was I uh, was in I was in um, Jersey City, and I said. I didn't even say a joke yet. I said, hello. What? I said, I, I'm, I'm not Ruby Nelson from Asbury Park. I'm not from Asbury Park, but I was trying to say the city that people might know. Yeah. That I live close to. Yeah. And I'm like, hello, I'm not Ruby Nelson from Asbury Park. And I immediately, boo! I because said, you were from Asbury Park, yes. right? They didn't even care. You yeah. Know? But I recouped very easily. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just kidding. I'm from Newark. There you go. You had to rebound from that. Yes. There, there you go. Yeah. South I'm from the Dad. town right next door to you guys. Okay. Martin Luther King Boulevard. <laughs> That's in every town. So. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Okay. So, Maude, moving on to you. What are your What are things that you like to do besides acting? 
I do many things, but one of my favorite things to do besides acting is probably like play sports and cheer. Oh, okay. So what sports do you like? Um, so you like a rough and tumble tomboy sometimes? Yeah. Uh, I play basketball. And I also sort of kind of run track. You sort of kind of? <laughs> yeah. What I mean, does like, that mean? You sort of kind of? Yeah. What does that mean, though? It's like, I do, but it's not like a thing that I do, like, every day, but it's something that I do. So you just show doing. up whenever? Yeah. And what does the coach say about that? Well, no, I don't show up whenever. I'm not on the team right now. Okay. I was, but then I got busy. Okay. So. How far do you plan on taking your acting career, Maud? Uh, I plan on taking it very far. I plan on, like, growing up and developing uh, act while acting. Cause on Broadway or something. on TV? On Broadway or TV or both? <laughs> both. All right. And how confident do you think that you'll make it? Um, I'm really confident that I'll make it because... Really? Uh, Why? Because I have a lot of, like, talent and... Acting is one of them, and I'm really good at acting. And All right. Can you give us a little just, bit? Uh, from what? Okay, how about, let's say, our uh, Kids in Bizville play? Can you give us a little, um, a line? Anything with you and Sharimi's character? Well, wait, 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 wait. What are one of the characters So you played? Actually, you played more than one character in the play, right? Yes. You played um, Apples. You played a girl. Who played, Mariah. She played Mar Apples and Mariah. Maximus. Maximus. So she was able to play Pharaoh. She was okay. Let's. What did the Pharaoh uh, say in the play? Um. Tell us. Do loudly. I say to him? Yes. Okay. Loudly. It is true, Your Highness. There is a town in the countryside, and they say the kids built it with their own hands. Go on. The new town make weirdly look weird. Get it? Weird as in strange? <laughs> and scene. <laughs> and scene. Now let me ask you a question. How did her joke come off? Uh, How was her time? During the play? Or just, just now? Both. How just did now? you feel about that? Um, during the play, I, I, I think it was delivered excellently. Okay. Like, I feel my Maud is a natural. She has a lot of talent. I thought so, too. Yes. And so, we're going to... This How time, about, it didn't... It wasn't that funny. No. But, we're gonna, <laughs> I, but you know what we're going to do? We're going to roll a clip of that again so you can see it. Okay? Is that okay with you, Maud? Sure. Let's roll a clip of that. Bye. It is true, Your Highness. There's a new town in the countryside, and they say the children built it with their own hands. The new town make weirdly look weird. You get it like weird as in strange. <laughs> strange. Go on. I would like to move there myself, sir. No! Is it true? My sister, I mean, Auntie Natural. Mm. Has built a town better than Whitley with a bunch of kids in hers? It, it's it's all right, sir. We could take the town like we did Weirdly. We could use fists or we could break wrists. <laughs> Who's been shining my eyes? <laughs> okay, so when you guys um come together, you're all strangers kind of strangers, okay? How long did it take before you became almost like a a family? You meshed together, you felt that you guys were okay, you know, you could laugh and joke, because I, when you and the other actors were together, you guys started, at first, you kind of like were sitting away from each other, and after a while, it was like, you guys are playing, I couldn't get you apart, couldn't get you to focus, you were having so much fun, but what? how long does it take before you become comfortable with one another? Should I answer the question? Good. Whoever wants to answer. Uh, it probably takes like um, a couple of days for me to get used to the actors because part of being in the play is to get used to the people around you because you need them to like uh, do better and to get your parts right because they really help you and without like really getting to know the actors, it's like you're just doing a play and you're done with it. So and being comfortable. How long before you were comfortable with being around the other people? Um, I was very comfortable. I actually saw... Some How about with the director? Um, 
I was comfortable with the director. I actually liked his feedback as far as being a new actor. Okay. Um, and some of the pointers that he had and how to make it, you know, more personable and, mm -hmm. and funny for the audience. Um, how how easy is it for you to take constructive criticism? Very easy. <clears throat> for me, for something that I haven't really been involved in, so I I want as much feedback as possible. Okay, so if let's say you did another play and the director was basically saying, I need you to do this and do that and you're not doing this right, how does will that make you feel some kind of way or you're okay with this? Are you you know, do you get upset easily? Do you take direction easily? I think that the key to that is um how do you tell Trusting. other people not to get offended? Yeah, that's what I should say. I think the the director has the sight that you don't see, and okay. and the vision, okay. and and their their guidance into it is key. So whatever they're telling you, it's, it's only going to make the play better. It's going to make you a better actor, appear to be a better actor, even if you're terrible. You know, they they give you the right. <laughs> what if he said that to you that you were kind of bad, that you actually don't fit this role? How do you feel? Do you take that home and do you feel that that person, the director, is wrong? Or do you work harder or? No, I, I think, well, the, 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 the thing about acting is once you get like the size, like, like you, you have a sheet that has the script on it, you call it the sides. And if, if as long as you have the size in your hand, yes. your character is not developed. So anything they tell you, if you're doing bad, you haven't developed the character. So you have to accept that you want to develop the character. You want to okay. become Shirimi. Ha ha ha. You want to become that person. Okay, how did so, you become Shirimi? Ha 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 ha. Well, Shirimi for me was an easy fit because I am the ruler. Because you are <laughs> <'cause he> <laughs> Shirimi, okay? It's me. <laughs> but, but seriously, I think the best way to become the, the character is read the entire script to from beginning to end so you know where where the where the character goes sometimes they start off evil and they end up bad sometimes they start off good and what did i say evil and end up bad that's the same thing uh but you know sometimes the character can change throughout the thing sometimes okay. they stay the same but you have to read the whole script and you know if i'm going to be evil the entire thing then this is how i got to be if i'm going to be evil and then get enlightenment then this is how I gotta be. I got so you, you get that vision in character development. But once you develop the character, it's just pure fun. How right, did Mona? you get into all your many roles? Um, how did I you guess... prepare for the play? Um, I don't know. I guess I just really like tried to connect with the characters. Okay. Then I somehow like. Like he said, became the character, and then. But all your characters just, were kids, right? Yes. So you're a kid. So, let me ask you: Do you change different personalities throughout the day? Yes. You do. Yes. How do you do that, and why do you do that? Cause sometimes, like things happen, you feel different ways. Right. Yeah. So what car? So how do you feel yourself throughout the day? Sometimes you can be the little kid, right? You can be Maud. And sometimes you have to be strong, right? You have to be somebody else. I've heard you. You you sometimes in school you have to be the um more tough Maud, am I right? Yeah. Because I kind of see you you I saw you. You went and you told me. You said sometimes you're hi hi, you know, let's have fun. But if other kids are kind of like saying something to you you had to be the no you're not you know the yeah. tough one am i right yes i've seen you do that have you and how do you prepare for your um you know your role how did you prepare um I or it was read, a, is there was the role similar to